We will now talk about the efforts to develop an HIV vaccine that started immediately after scientists identified the AIDS patient zero and constructed the first HIV transmission tree. However, developing an AIDS vaccine proved to be a difficult task. In 1994, Bill Clinton famously announced that it is no longer a question of whether we can develop an AIDS vaccine. It is simply a question of when. However, today, we still don't have an HIV vaccine. To explain why it is so difficult to develop an HIV vaccine, let's consider how the HIV virus evades the immune system. The shell of the HIV virus is covered by the envelope proteins, and the idea of an HIV vaccine is to stimulate the immune system so that it is able to recognize envelope proteins as foreign and to destroy them. Uh, this approach, however, failed because the HIV envelope proteins are extremely variable. There are many HIV subtypes. Even in a single individual, the HIV population evolves so fast that it evades the immune system and results in many HIV subtypes. HIV strains from different patients are so diverged that they require different drug cocktails, thus raising the challenge of classifying HIV subtype. And one of these subtypes may become fast replicating and deadly. It happens when HIV tricks human cells into fusing with neighboring cells. Such fusion creates a giant multicell that allows the virus to kill many cells at once. Imagine that you are a doctor who wants to figure out whether your HIV patient has developed a fast replicated subtype. What would you do? Today, you can determine sequences of dozens and even hundreds of various HIV genomes circulating in a patient. But how would you figure out whether some of them represent a fast replicating subtype, a difficult machine learning problem? Biologists figure it out that if you shift and align all these HIV sequences in a specific way, then an interesting pattern emerges. Fast replicating HIV genomes have amino acid arginine or lysine at positions 11 and 25 of the envelope proteins, allowing the doctor to diagnose this subtype. But how do you know what is the correct alignment that reveals the 11-25 rule? Do you see an interesting pattern in these three sequences? Probably not. But if I align them, the string algorithm highlighted in red will emerge. You probably don't see any similarities between identifying fast replicating HIV viruses and the speech recognition. Wait until we cover the Viterbi algorithm and see why the hidden marker models have turned into one of the most popular algorithmic techniques in machine learning with wide-ranging applications. Next, I will describe a recent outbreak of an E. coli killer strain and will ask you to come up with a problem formulation that would help doctors to stop this outbreak.